You see, oftentimes in life, the treasure of our true hope, our eternal hope, is accessible to us. But to actually have it, to sustain it, to hold on to it, takes a reorienting of our life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the How to Study the Bible podcast. I'm your host, your coach, your encourager, Nicole. I'm so glad to be with you today and for us to explore a new series together. We're going to be doing a mini series on comfort in God's promises, and particularly at a time like this where we are experiencing an unprecedented global stress together. Um, We are living with fear and uncertainty and stress that has never been seen before in our lifetime, and we're doing it together. And there's no time like now to find hope and comfort in the promises of God. Just as we've talked about all through this podcast, the Bible is inherently relatable and helpful and relevant. There is work to be done to get to the place where it feels relatable, helpful, and relevant. But in times like this, when we are deeply searching for true north, where we we need to set our compass on security and strength and promises that we can rely on in a time where everything feels unreliable, this is the time more than ever that we can go to God's word and seek out the truth of his timeless promises in a way that can actually change the way that we live. Live today, the way that we're feeling, the way that we think, the way that we act, the way that we engage with the future. So that is the promise in front of us. And we're going to start today around this idea of how do we find hope in stressful times? It's an interesting title in and of itself because it assumes that somehow when times are not stressful, we are able to find hope. And somehow when times are stressful, that hope becomes elusive, which makes me wonder what that hope would be about in the first place. So my subtitle for today's podcast is What to Do When We Don't Know What to Do. And what I know to do when I don't know what to do is to go back to the foundational truth that I know deep down to be real and true. I call that home base. I like to go back to home base and then evaluate all of the thoughts, feelings, experiences through home base. So I want to take us to home base today in where we can find our true hope and then build from there on how that hope can actually impact us in stressful times. And I want to do that by going to a couple of parables that Jesus told in Matthew 13 and in Matthew 6, just short little parables about a reorienting of our life around what real treasure is. So I'm going to read you these verses, and then we're going to walk through the Alive Method, just as we've been doing up to this point. We're going to talk about what does it say, what's the backstory, what does it mean, and what does it mean for me, looking particularly at these passages. So here we go, Matthew 13, 44, perhaps the shortest parable in the Bible. And it says this, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought the field. Commentator Dale Bruner says, joy is the engine of change. And in this parable, in this spiritual reality that Jesus is teaching us through an earthly example, this man has found something so wonderful, so amazing, that he has to go do what he needs to do, which is to sacrifice everything he has in order to have this great joy that's accessible to him in this treasure. Our eternal hope that we can see here in this story, when we think about what this is actually saying... What this is saying is that whatever he found was so much more valuable than everything he had that he was willing to risk everything he had for the joy of everything he found. Our eternal hope is found in this message that the good news of Jesus, the home base of our faith says that the good news of Jesus, that forgiveness of sin, security for our souls, about the opportunity to be made right with God, about our new standing with God as sons and daughters of His. This is such good news that it's worth everything and that it changes everything. So this guy found treasure, but he couldn't have the treasure without the sacrifice. The action of reorienting his life around this treasure by selling all he had wasn't needed for him to find the treasure, but it was needed 
for him to keep the treasure. You see, oftentimes in life, the treasure of our true hope, our eternal hope, is accessible to us. But to actually have it, to sustain it, to hold on to it, takes a reorienting of our life. What can happen in stressful times is we can become more aware of where we perhaps have placed our hope. Paul David Tripp, another author and pastor, says there's a dangerous tendency in each of our hearts to assign increasing importance to things beyond their true importance. So when we think about the idea that we can have treasure, but to actually hold on to it, we have to reorient our lives. We sort of put that over this idea of what it feels like to lose our hope in stressful times. And for me, the question that I have to ask myself is, what exactly was my hope in? If stressful times reveal to me that I hold hope in a career, or I hold hope in the way I get to live out my relationships, if I hold hope in a secure and healthy future, what does it look like when that security goes away? And how do I return to my actual home base? Because what Jesus is teaching in this parable is that there is a kind of treasure that is accessible to all of us that is far more valuable than any treasure we could ever have on earth. This is a story that Jesus tells more than once, and we see it again in Matthew chapter 6. This is the backstory is that Jesus is teaching the greatest sermon of all time, Matthew 5, 6 and 7 is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and this is within that beautiful passage of what does it look like to really live in the kingdom of God. And he says this in verse 19, don't store up treasure here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Another way that we discover our real home base in stressful times is by asking ourselves, where exactly is my treasure? Because where the desires of my heart are is where the treasure is. But what Jesus is teaching us in this passage is that there is a kind of treasure that is temporary and a treasure that is insecure, and then there's the kind of treasure that is eternal and eternally secure. The kind of treasure that we store up here on earth can be eaten by moths and destroyed by rust, and it can be stolen by thieves. But the kind of treasure that we store in heaven cannot be destroyed by moths or rust, cannot be stolen by thieves. It is completely secure and it is completely valuable. When I read this passage and I think about what this means, I find myself reflecting on the fact that Jesus sets up a comparison here, and it seems like there is no in-between. You can't have it both ways. Your heart cannot have two addresses. One address is here on earth, and it brings fleeting pleasure, but the other address is in heaven, and it brings lasting joy. Finding hope in stressful times means returning to our home base, and the question is, where is the home base of your heart? Sometimes the only way we know where our heart has been residing is when we lose what we've been finding security within. And if there's ever been a time where we are more exposed to the places that we can make important, the places that we can assign eternal importance that perhaps we discover are really temporary, it's now. It's in times where we find a fraying of our friendships, of our comforts, of our security and earthly things that we can ask ourselves, what is it like to really seek treasure that's in heaven? Because it sounds really appealing. The kind of treasure that we find in heaven that's secure and eternal and brings lasting joy and is so valuable that it's worth giving up everything else. Do you believe in that kind of treasure? Do you believe that we have a God in heaven who loves us so deeply and fully that he addresses our most important needs through an eternal perspective and treasure that is forgiven sin, relationship with him, provision in his presence? But you know what we're struggling with? when we discover that our heart maybe has been residing at a different address than we expected, is something that human beings have struggled with since the beginning of time. That's the beauty of the Bible. We go back to an ancient text and we discover that the very same concerns, needs, and temptations that we face today are the concerns, needs, and temptations that were faced then. King Solomon, who was said to be the wisest man of all time, the richest king ever, 
wrote a book called Ecclesiastes where he is pondering the meaning of a full life. And in Ecclesiastes 2, he talks about a time in his life where he pursued all earthly treasure, and this was the experience that he had. It says in verse 10, anything I wanted, I would take. I denied myself no pleasure. I even found great pleasure in hard work, a reward for all my labors. But as I looked at everything I had worked so hard to accomplish, it was all so meaningless, like chasing the wind. There was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. That's the New Living Translation version. It's interesting to think about that a person who's had it all also discovers that that is not a good place for your heart to have a home base. And sometimes it's actually when we lose things that we love that we also discover that that's not a good place for our heart to have a home base. The joy of our eternal treasure is what can change our hearts. The hope of our eternal treasure is what can calm our insecurities in times of stress. The best thing that can happen in life outside of God, all those things have come onto the table and have been brought into question in this season. But the best thing that can happen in a life with God is eternally secure and cannot be moved or shaken. And it's a place where we can find increasing joy. Philippians 4.19 says this, My God will supply all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. A pastor friend of mine said to me recently, it seems like God brings us to our knees so that we can rediscover how to pray. So if in this season you feel brought to your knees, know that that can actually be a really good place to be because it's on our knees that our hearts can rediscover home base. It's on our knees perhaps for the first time that we can discover what it means to actually put our treasure in heaven, to find our eternal, unshakable joy in the promises of God, that our sins are forgiven that our souls can rest secure, that we have placement in eternity, that we can have a relationship with God where He is constantly providing all of our needs, our emotional needs, our physical needs, our spiritual needs, that He wants to meet all of those, particularly and especially in stressful times like these. Go to your Father in heaven. Discover your new home base or your old home base. Come back to your home base. Wherever you've been, let the stress drive you to your knees to your father so that he might provide all of your needs. Talk with you next week. Thanks for listening to How to Study the Bible with Nicole Yunus, a production of lifeaudio.com and the Salem Web Network. This episode was produced by Kelly Givens and our executive producer, Stephen McGarvey, and edited by Stephen Sanders. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. To learn more about Nicole, you can check out her website at NicoleEunice.com. Her book on how to study the Bible is called Help, My Bible is Alive. And you can find a link to that plus a link to Nicole's site in today's show notes.